But the Daily Telegraph reporting now that the British passport has plummeted, while Jacob Rees-Mogg is forced to admit that he was horribly and catastrophically wrong about what would happen to our borders if you accepted his invitation to vote to control our borders. Because remember this, even if his lie was true, and it isn't, spoiler alert, even if it was somehow the sole responsibility of the French that Dover is now poised daily on the brink of epic chaos, that would be proof positive that we didn't take back control at all. Have a little listen to this exchange with Nick Ferrari today. It was quite nice to hear Nick playing one of his old clips. I must have played it 30 times in the last two years, so it was actually quite nice to hear it pop up on Nick's show after all this time. It was it was a sort of almost a touch of deja vu for people who listen to this programme. But here is Rhys Mogg talking through his hat a few years ago. I wonder if I can take you back a number of years. This is you and I speaking in June 2018 when I asked whether there might be queues at Dover. There'll be no need for checks at Dover, but it will be an ability to ensure that the roads keep running around Dover, even if there are delays at Calais. The delays will not be at Dover, they will be at Calais. The delays will not be at Dover. You'll be aware two weeks ago it was actually declared a critical incident. Some people spent 12 hours in their cars, lorry drivers passed out, and children defecated in the lay-by. A response to what you said some years ago, Mr Rees-Mogg. Well, the, the, the response is that the delays are caused by the French. But you and said there'd the, be the no French... delays at Dover, yeah, yes, Mr yes. Rees-Mogg. Yeah, but they, they are um, um, French-created delays. But they the are French at Dover, decided, Mr Rees-Mogg. Are, they, are you are prepared Dover, to apologise that you got that wrong? You, you, yes, of course I got that wrong, but I got it wrong for the right reason, if I may put it that way. <laughs> Do expand. Um, the, 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 what, what, the point I was making was that the only delays would be caused by the French if they decided not to allow British people to pass through freely. They have decided to do that. They failed to get people to turn up. Um, and that is what caused the delays in Dover because we have juxtaposed border controls, which means that we check people in Calais and the French check people in Dover. And actually, um, that means that if the French don't operate their system properly, we get the delays. It, it's why I was saying that British people might think that going to Portugal is more fun because the Portuguese want us to go and the French are being very difficult. And why should we go and spend our hard-earned money in France if the French don't want us? Are you suggesting we boycott one of our closest European neighbours, Mr rees I'm not suggesting a boycott. I'm just suggesting that Portugal has made e-gates available to British tourists uh, and that there's something to be said for supporting people who support you. Not getting off a boat, it hasn't. But, of course, Rees Mogg, again, leaves us wondering whether he is spectacularly dishonest or spectacularly stupid. And that's the question I've got for you this morning. So, Jacob Rees Mogg, forced to admit he was horribly wrong about delays in Dover because he didn't understand what being a third country would mean. I'm afraid there is no wiggle room here. He didn't understand what being a third country would mean for, for a, a cross-channel crossing. Well, does that make him, in your view, and I would love to talk to you. And do you know what worries me ever so slightly is that if you're feeling mugged today, if you're feeling a bit stupid, if you're feeling con, you're going to get cross with me again for being right. Now, you voted because you believed people like Jacob Rees-Mogg. And, and, you know, Nick was also supportive of Brexit as well. It's uh, it, important to remember how many voices were in that camp telling you that it would be a good idea that you should vote to leave the European Union. Well, the ridiculously inadequate Remain campaign was warning you about, for example, delays in Dover. Some people took the trouble to explain why they would be inevitable. And some people just sort of crossed their fingers, clo closed their eyes and hoped for the best. So now that Jacob Rees-Mogg is, is hum I mean, humiliating himself now every time he opens his mouth, do you think he is stupid or dishonest? 0345 6060 And obviously, they're not mutually exclusive, but do enter into the spirit of the inquiry. They don't just all ring in and say both. Is, 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 it in any way is it in any way excusable that a man who still rejoices in the title Minister for Brexit Opportunities has such an obvious misunderstanding of Brexit itself, has such a catastrophic failure of comprehension of the single issue that his job is charged with maximising? As with putting Nadine Dorries in the 
um, Secretary of State for Culture, Media and Sport role. There are large parts of me that wonders whether Boris Johnson spent a lot of his time as Prime Minister just doing things entirely for his own amusement. Like, uh, like, like Paul Newman in Cool Hand Luke, just seeing how many boiled eggs he could eat. I know what I'll do. I'll make Jacob Rees-Mogg Minister for Brexit Opportunities. That'll be even funnier than making Nadine Secretary of State for Culture, Media and Sport. I don't know what else he would have come up with next. Uh, probably making Harold Shipman Health Secretary. But just things designed entirely to to sort of tickle his own warped sense of humour. So there's the question. Jacob Rees-Mogg, catastrophically wrong about Dover, just as he was catastrophically wrong about Northern Ireland. Is the man stupid or is he just a massive liar? 0345 6060 973.